So the case of Freelance versus Fletcher is an example of a locus classicus case. And a locus classicus case is a case upon which a principle of law is established. So another example of a locus classicus case is, a case, is the case of Donog versus Stevenson. And it's this case that uh, the principle of negligence was extracted. So locus classicus case is that case that establishes a principle of law. So the facts of the case in Donog, in Raylands versus Fletcher, the case that establishes the law on uh, strict liability, are Mr. Rayland had a mill and wanted to supply water to this mill. So Mr. Rayland hired an independent contractor or an engineer who was to build a water reservoir that was to supply water to the mill. So this engineer came, identified the spot where he was to construct the, that particular reservoir. So Mr. Fletcher was, uh, had a coal mine just adjacent to Mr. Raylan's, uh, Mr. Raylan's mill. So Mr. Raylan had dug five, Mr. Fletcher had dug five vertical shafts that he used for mining that particular coal. So when this independent contractor came, he did not warn Mr. Rayland about those vertical shafts. He just identified the spot and uh, constructed the water reservoir. This is an 1860 case. So he constructed the reservoir. So that those vertical shafts were sunk, were, were filled with some soil, some rocks, and some timber. So it wasn't visible. So this independent contractor or engineer constructed the water reservoir, but did not warn Mr. Rayland about the vertical shaft. So when he was constructing the water reservoir, one of the vertical shafts uh, sank, collapsed, and water fled and filled the mine, the coal mine, the Mr. Fletcher's coal mine. So Mr. Fletcher was, uh, was forced to abandon the entire mining site, and he incurred losses as a result because he wasn't able to mine again. So he went and sued Mr. Rayland for the damages that he incurred. So the trial court ruled in favor of Mr. Fletcher, but it was further reversed in the Exchequer Chamber in that uh, the court ruled that Mr. Rayland wasn't aware that there was or there existed a coal mine just adjacent to his uh, mill. So the court, the Court of Exchequer, Exchequer reversed the rulings in the trial court. So the, the case was further appealed in the Exchequer Chamber, whereby the ruling in the Exchequer Court was overturned. And the court held that Mr. Uh, Rayland was liable because he had or he possessed a dangerous thing. So under this rule of strict liability, it, it, is, it demands that when you, you are not supposed to possess a dangerous thing. When you possess something that is so dangerous, you must keep it at your own peril. Subject is not able to escape and cause harm to other people. So he kept a dangerous thing in his... Uh, he was in possession of a dangerous uh, thing that caused damages. So from this rule of... From this case of Freelance versus Fletcher, there are five things that are brought out for a strict liability to apply. First of all, there must be a thing. And this thing must accumulate. And after this thing that accumulates must uh, be in a natural use of land and it must escape and cause damage after escaping. So those five things are brought out from this rule of Freelance versus Fletcher. There are requirements in the rule of Freelance versus Fletcher. The thing uh, must accumulate in a natural use of land, escape and damage. So under the thing, the thing need not to be dangerous. Even the most harmless thing can uh, constitute to a thing. And here, things like electricity, water, poisonous leaves can be uh, included as a thing. So uh, this thing must accumulate. It must have stayed for quite some time. And it must be in a natural use of land, not permanent use of land. So those things that are as a result of nature are not included under this rule of Freelance versus Fletcher in strict liability. So those that are in a natural use of land are the ones that are included. So the thing must escape. One of the requirements in the rule of Freelance versus Fletcher, the thing must escape. And after the escaping, it must cause damages. So you must prove damages uh, from the escape of that thing. If you're not able to prove damages, then that rule will not favor you. 
So there are limitations or exemptions to this rule of uh, Rayleigh versus Fletcher. First of all, the first limitation is that of uh, consent. If you had consented for that water reservoir to be constructed, then you cannot sue under this rule of uh, strict liability. Another limitation is that of contributory negligence. It's also a limitation to this rule of Reliance versus Fletcher. Another one, another exemption is the that one of um, if you if the both parties had agreed that that site that that's about consent. So let me. The defense is uh, the act of God common benefit if, if that thing was to benefit both parties then that both parties cannot sue for for strict liability and another one is the act of stranger for example if a stranger came at your homestead and and tied the dog so the, and the dog went and committed a crime then you cannot sue for strict liability because it's an exemption and it's an act of a third party or a stranger that's that's just the same like the same way an independent contractor is different from uh mr F rayland so the act of a third party or a stranger is also a defend and statutory authority you know government bodies are included to as statutory bodies and if a government intend to construct something or uh you cannot sue the government a government is an independent body and it's a statutory body with statutory authority. So it's also an exemption to this rule of strict liability. So uh, the elements under strict liability, the defense side must prove that that thing was brought and that thing that caused damages to the plaintiff. So I think that is the end of my episode of uh, Scott Talks Law and my episode of my lecture. And uh, you can subscribe to Scott's legal channel, you can comment on the comment section about uh, the, how you feel about the lectures. When you find the lectures to be interesting, don't just be silent. Uh, equity <laughs> aids the indolent. <laughs> so you can just comment on the comment section on how you feel about the lectures.